So today we're going to talk about logarithmic functions. Um, and one of the reasons why logarithmic functions are covered uh, directly after exponential functions is because of their relationship together. Uh, one of the most important uh, characteristics uh, that you can take away with, from this chapter is that logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverses of one another. Um, so we'll be able to take advantage of that fact uh, in studying um, logarithmic functions a little more specifically. So to get started, um, a logarithmic function is of the form f of x equals log base a of x. Um, the a value that you're looking at, uh, that's a real number. Uh, and because the relationship between exponential and logs exists, that a is the same a that we saw in the last section uh, as the base of our exponential function, uh, which also means uh, that a has to be bigger than zero, and a also is defined as not equaling one. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to the graph of a logarithmic function, we're gonna be able to put this together pretty easily because we already understand what the graph of an exponential function looks like. So I'll go ahead and start with that graph uh, from the other day. So our exponential curve looks something like this, where we have a point here at zero, one, uh, and we have an asymptote at y equals zero. So we also know that now, since logs and exponentials are inverses of one another, their graph is going to be symmetric uh, about the line y equals x. So the graph of my logarithm is actually going to look like this, where our point that we're going to track now is going to be the point 1, 0. And in fact, we actually have now a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So that's uh, the, the yellow there, that's the actual graph. Now that's pretty sloppy, so let me go ahead and clean this up for you so you can take a better look at what it is we're uh, gonna be moving all around the xy plane with our transformations. So the graph of a log looks something like this, where our point is one, zero, and we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So uh, domain, of a log curve, um, as you could probably see from the picture, or you can remember your inverse properties of domain and range. Uh, the domain is going to be zero to positive infinity, uh, and the range is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So now looking at a, a few more specific examples here, um, the base will um, dictate uh, what the curve is doing, uh, similar to how it did with exponential functions. Uh, if you remember back from with exponential functions, uh, when that base a was bigger than one, uh, it was an increasing function. Uh, and so similarly here, when we have our base, in this case three, bigger than one, we're gonna have our increasing logarithmic function uh, asymptote still the same at x equals zero. But now you can see also we could have a base of one-third. Uh, and for exponential functions, when we had that one-third raised to the x, we talked about that being the same thing as three to the negative x. And that negative was our change from increasing to decreasing. Uh, so carrying that over now to logarithms, uh, when we talk about a base that's between zero and one, we still have our decreasing characteristics. So our point zero, 1 is still true, and our asymptote x equals 0. Uh, but you can see that we now have a decreasing function. As we walk along this curve from left to right, uh, we're going to be walking down a hill. Okay, So keep that in mind when, when graphing logarithms. Uh, the base uh, is doing the same thing as it did um, with exponential functions. So we'll carry each of these a little bit further now and talk about their limits. Um, the limit in this first one, as x goes to positive infinity uh, of log base 3 of x, is going to describe the behavior of the function as our x's get increasingly uh, bigger as we approach positive infinity. And as you can see, as our x's get bigger, our y is going to take us up to positive infinity as well. Now. When it comes to the next question, uh, it might look a little different. Uh, we're not going to say the limit as x goes to negative infinity. We're also not going to say the limit as x goes to zero. We're actually going to say that we're interested in, in evaluating the limit as x goes to zero 
from the right. Uh, if we don't specify that, it's a little bit unclear because uh, we can't approach it from the left. So we need to specify from the right. That's what that superscript plus means. And so as you can see, if we approach uh, zero from the right, then our y values will be approaching negative infinity in this case. Okay, um, similar over here, if we want to compute the limit as x goes uh, to positive infinity of our log base one third of x, the behavior of our function, our y values at positive infinity end up going down to negative infinity here. Uh, and then if we ask the question about x approaching zero from the right, once again, because uh, it doesn't exist on the left, uh, you can see now we would be up at positive infinity. So in summary, uh, keep in mind, uh, it, it's very subtle, uh, and it's, it's not always the, the most obvious because we're not plotting points, but when that base is bigger than 1, then f is an increasing function. When that base a is between 0 and 1, we have a decreasing function. And the last thing I'll say before jumping into a problem uh, is purely uh, notational. Uh, anytime you see uh, log of x, that actually implies we have a log base 10 of x. So um, just like when you have a square root, we don't write the 2 there. It's just an implied uh, index of 2. Uh, logarithms are similar. If there's no, nothing written there, uh, it's an implied base 10. Uh, and the other thing that I'll mention is when you see ln of x, this implies that you have a log base e of x, where e is the natural number, the 2.71, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, lo natural log uh, ln implies we have a log base e. So in this example, we're going to graph um, the logarithmic curve uh, using transformations now. Uh, and so similar to all of the other ones, I'll go ahead and I'll start here with just a basic uh, parent function. Uh, without a base being written, uh, as I just mentioned, it's an implied base 10. Uh, 10 being bigger than 1, it means we're going to have an increasing function. Uh, our point is going to be 1, 0, and we're going to have an asymptote at x equals 0. So uh, here we only have two different transformations. Um, it looks like the first thing we would do is we would need to move this uh, parent function two units to the left. And the second thing we would do then is move it one unit up. So uh, you can show this in multiple steps or you can show this in one step. It's, it's up to you. Uh, I'll go ahead and show it in multiple steps. So if I take the previous graph and I move it two units to the left, now the vertical asymptote will be changing. What was originally at x equals 0 is now going to be at x equals negative 2, uh, which then implies that our point that we're tracking is going to be about right there. Uh, and more specifically, we've moved it two units to the left, so we're going to be at negative 1, uh, 0. Okay? Uh, and so again, this is the graph now of y equals log of x plus 2. As always, you can plug in the point into the equation to make sure that it works, and in this case, it does as well. <clears throat> uh, the last thing then that I'll put together uh, will be the final graph, uh, taking our previous curve and shifting it one unit up. So the asymptote now doesn't change. It's already been moved. Uh, the asymptote is at x equals negative 2. Our point now, being moved up one unit, is now going to be at negative 1, 1. Um, and again, you can take that point, plug it back into the original function, uh, and it should work. So that's our, our final graph uh, of log x plus 2 plus 1. <clears throat> uh, the domain of this, uh, as you can see, that would be the left and the right. Uh, that would be a negative 2, which is an open uh, bracket, to positive infinity. The range, which would be the up and the down, goes from negative to positive infinity. Um, additionally, uh, we can have the limit discussion now. Uh, so the question, two of the questions would be the limit uh, as x approaches positive infinity of our function. And the other one would be the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So we're approaching that vertical asymptote but coming in from the only direction that the graph actually exists. 
so um, as x goes to positive infinity, our y's go to positive infinity, uh, and as we approach negative 2 from the right, the y's uh, end up going to negative infinity there.